in the very first chapter of the very first page of the Science of Mind textbook written by Ernest Holmes, the founder of this great teaching, Holmes writes, and I quote, the divine plan is one of freedom. Bondage is not God-ordained. Freedom is the birthright of every living soul. All instinctively feel this. The truth points to freedom on the law. Thus, the inherent nature of man is forever seeking to express itself in terms of freedom. We do well to listen to this inner voice, for it tells us of a life wonderful in its scope, of a love beyond our fondest dreams, of a freedom which the soul craves. End of that Ernest Holmes quote. You know, friends, in our courses titled Change Your Thinking, Change Your Life, at the, in the correctional services, uh, both the female and male correctional uh, facilities here in Kingston, one of the classes, of the, of the 12 classes which each cohort uh, attends, one of those classes is dedicated to giving the participants an opportunity to focus on what is their most desired thing. So it's a question that says, what is your most desired thing? And as you might well imagine, their most, the most desired thing for many, many, many people in, that are incarcerated is, of course, freedom. And that invariably leads to a discussion about the meaning of freedom. Because Reverend Michael Record, who, who works with, with along, co-facilitates along with me at the Tower Street Men's Facility, and Reverend Ann Shand and, and Carol Charlton, sitting with Mr. Gunny this morning, who works at the female facility, always have to lead them, or usually lead them, to, to the understanding that there are people who are in prison outside. Because blame, shame, and regret keep a lot of us locked inside in a way that is, is even more terrible than the concrete, the, the brick walls, and the, and the iron bars. Many people are just hemmed in and imprisoned by their state of consciousness. And so you see, friends, I want to suggest to you this morning that one cannot achieve freedom until one has discovered one's purpose in life. In Jamaica, we'd say, why are you there? What are you here? Not here at the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living, because we know why you're here for that. Why are you here on the planet? What is your most desired thing, and what have you come here to do? And Reverend Michael very often says to our participants, you don't have to wait until you get out of here to begin living your purpose. If you decide what your most desired thing is, and it is freedom, what does that really mean for you, and how are you going to start living it right here when they lock you up this afternoon at 3.30? They call it lockdown, uh, appropriately. There's nothing up about it. So, this brings me to your assignment. And regulars at the Temple of Light, Center for Spiritual Living, know I always give an assignment. Your assignment, your mission, should you decide to undertake it, is to ask yourself three questions. The first question we've touched on is to just contemplate what your purpose is. What is your most desired thing? And what are you doing here about it? Question one, what is my most desired thing? Question two, what do I need to be or to become in order for that most desired thing to come to fruition? What do I need to be or become? And the third question, what do I need to release, to let go of, in order to live my passion, my courage, my dream of what is possible in my life? And if you do that, I think you will be walking in the footsteps of the beautiful Winnie Madikizela Mandela. You know, I read up an interview um, with her 
uh, which, which, talk, which really gave me well, some insight into her sense of purpose. Um, she was here in 1999 with the South African, here in Jamaica, with the South African uh, football team. And um, the, the Flair, the, the Daily Gleaner has a, had a, a magazine called Flair, and, the, and there was a, an exclusive interview with Flair um, for her. And when the Flair uh, reporter talked about her sense of, of purpose and the, the compelling energy that sustained her, Winnie said, and I want to, to see if I can find her quote. He had, he had been questioning her about whether uh, she thought she would go down in history, whether history would be kind to her. And she wasn't interested in her response about whether she, she was a popular figure. And as everybody has said uh, who spoke before me, of course she made mistakes and of course she, uh, she did, she, you know. This service today isn't about beatifying her and making her into a saint. Nobody wants to do that. What we are here doing is celebrating her courage and her strength in the face of great oppression and her, the way she lived her commitment and her sense of purpose and her most desired thing. And she said her most desired thing would be that the youth of her country would come out of the jail of poverty and to live their freedom and their dignity as human beings. And then turning to her beauty, isn't it funny when they interview um, women, the reporters always ask about their beauty secrets. They, nobody ever asks me, and I've been interviewed several times. <laughs> I could have given them a, a thing or two about false eyelashes. Um, but they, the reporter said, you know, is there, you're over 60, and, and you still, your skin, you have, have such beautiful skin tone, and, um, you know, you look so young. Is there a beauty secret? And she replied, I don't use any makeup. Quote, if I've attained anything, that alone beautifies me, not only internally, but externally. And she added, having God as your guide. Most politicians, she said, who attain power, forget that they only reach there because God was on their side, unquote. The colorful, often controversial, former South African First Lady concluded that interview by saying that she would not rest until her people had overcome poverty and the youth of the land are fully liberated and economically viable in their own country. Is that a sense of purpose or is that a sense of purpose? Eh? Yes, indeed. 